Yeah, what's up, people? We need to talk about Zaka. We need to talk about the so-called club's captain. First of all, let's just kind of reflect on the events of what happened yesterday. Arsenal went up 2-0. VAR played a big part in the fact that Crystal Palace came back into the game. In terms of urgency, when the game was tied at 2-2, Arsenal were trying to win the game. Zaka was being substituted in the 61st minute. So this is a long time to go and it's an early pull. So the manager's thinking, I've got half an hour to win this game. And let's be honest, we had chances to win the game previously before and uh, we just wasn't executing. And it wasn't so much as the executing, but there were times when guys were having a shot on goal when all they needed to do was cross it into the box and there was viable options for an assist uh, and that just didn't just didn't happen either way that was probably the biggest reason why we lost the game outside of the disallowed goal from VAR but that's another issue altogether this video is really about Zaka and as he was being substituted the fans expressed frustration with him taking too long to get off the pitch there were cheers originally which was patronizing at best he throws his hands up in the air as if to say, okay, I'm right back at you. Yeah, <laughs> you're cheering for me to get off the pitch. He seemed to, to approach the whole thing negatively and then turned into gouding the fans. And that's when the booze happened. The booze happened when he put his hand to his hair as if to say, I can't hear you. And he was gouding the fans into booing and that's exactly what they did and let's let's be clear i of course i don't agree with booing players but this is something totally different because originally they were not booing they were cheering us to say you know come on hurry up and get off that's completely different to booing yes it was patronizing but it wasn't booing and the meaning between the two are not the same and he took it upon himself to go the fans into booing him and he has to own that i hear people trying to defend zaka by saying it's emery's fault emery ain't got nothing to do with it emery subbed him off against the sheffield united on monday night and this didn't happen and there was still urgency in the game and i've seen him run off or trot off or hurry up off the pitch knowing that he's given his extra teammates more of a chance to score but there was no sense of urgency about it. And it was a cryptic message to the fans as to say, screw you. And that's the reason why the fans turned on him. And I don't know how you can repair something like that because initially a Twitter apology comes out and says, you know, my bad. But he knew exactly what he was doing. Most things that are done are impulsive on the field. We get it. It's an emotional game. Players sometimes do things that they regret doing but this thing has been brewing for a long time and he's faced criticism for being the captain for most parts of this season so this wasn't something that was just a a rush response this is something that's been brewing between Zaka and the fan base for a long time and the fact of the matter is and let's talk facts because that's all I really deal with the fact is is he has not been a leader on this team and he's not been productive enough to wear the armband he has not selflessly driven this team taken it upon his shoulders to drive this team to success he just doesn't have it he doesn't have the intensity the leadership or the voice on the field to lead this team now I hear reports that he gives out fines and in practice he's an authoritarian and all these other things that I'm sorry but that doesn't produce results it really doesn't if you're on the training pitch and a player's coming late and you're fining him how is that going to translate to victories on the pitch yeah the fans don't see that the fans don't see what you do in training in midweek the fans only judge you on what you do on the pitch and what they can see and the results that you're driving. And as a captain, it's your job to drive your players 
as much as it is Emery's as well as a manager, to drive your players to victory. And neither Emery or Zaka is doing that. Storming off the field, having a ruck, throwing his arms up in the air, putting his hands to his ear, taking off the shirt. It's just, it, it's not going to wash with Arsenal fans. I'm sorry. It's not going to wash with Arsenal fans. You ca this is something which you cannot recover from. Because there is no gratification for you to turn and go the fans into what happened against Palace. Now, let's remember, this is a game that we still could have won had it not been for VAR. But this isn't about that. If we had won the game, the context of what happened with Zaka would still not have changed. What he did was unacceptable on every, every level and i'm hearing that you know Torreira was close to tears while these events was going on Aubameyang held his head in shame and what happened afterwards is there was three players that visited zaka at his house i don't know whether it was to consolidate him or i don't know whether it was to put an arm around his shoulder and give him support or I don't know whether it was for them condoning his actions but what I do know is when you have a squad of 25 and only three people turn up to support the captain that pretty much says a lot about what he did on that field on Sunday it tells you about how wrong he was because I've seen players throw support behind a teammate, and that ain't it. And Hector Bellerin came out on Twitter and really didn't have anything to say about the instant. All he did was to say to the fans that he can understand what's been going on and that we need to pull together as a fan base in order to strive forward. And he's right. You know, I'm not saying that he's wrong. And that's probably the way to approach it. But this all comes down to Zaka goading the fans. If you're being substituted off, what you need to do is clap, yeah, to the fans to show your support behind the team and hurry up and get your backside off the pitch. That's all he had to do. For him to come back from this by Emery would be nothing short of disturbing for the fan base. Because Meza Ozil has not done anything, and neither has Torreira, and both can't even get on the field. It, it, Ozil can't even dress up. But yet, Zaka, as a point of entry for Emery talking after the game, saying he'll have to talk to his captain because what he'd done was wrong. Dude, we know that. And what we're looking for you as the manager is for you to lead by example and let everybody know that that is unacceptable. And the only way you can do that is to strip him of the captaincy. Whether you play him or not, I don't care because he's going to get booed anyway. As far as I'm concerned, the fans dislike him and everything that he's about. They don't want no part of it. What they want are players who want to kiss the badge, yeah, and applaud the fan base. That's what the fans want. Players who's going to go onto the pitch, and give 110%. That's what they want. So guys, how do we come back from this? As I said, Emery, it's all down to you. He has to stamp his authority on this situation and he has to come out with an announcement this week to say that he's stripped of the captaincy. And whatever he does from there, I can deal, I can live with that. Whether he replaces him, which he should do, or whether he plays him, I do not want that man to wear a captain's armband for the club that I love. It's as simple as that. But it's a sad state of affairs coming out of this because all of my worst fears kind of came true, which is I don't trust this, this club anymore. I don't trust the manager and his tactics. And this was supposedly our best team sheet of the season. This was supposedly all of our players on the field, most, yeah, because Rob Holden wasn't there. 
And even though Rob Holding wasn't there, you've got to give it to Socrates because he should have had two goals. He was a game winner and he produced the goods. And he should have had two goals. From, from, so from that perspective, Socrates had a decent game. But Lacazette was seriously short of fitness. You guys saw in my player ratings, I only gave him a four. Because he kept flopping down on the floor, feigning at tackles. Some of them were right, some of them were wrong. But the fact that he was play-acting, and remember the play-acting elbow he did against Victoria in midweek. That was laughable. And it's as if he never learned from that. And he just doesn't look match fit. That's just me being honest. I, I would have preferred to have played or even substituted Martinelli for Lacazette. And I hear people talking about Abamian not getting service. Abamian had his chances yesterday. That beautiful ball over by Guendozi where he just missed the target. And sometimes as a striker, you've got to make your own luck. You know, we talked about the balls coming in from Pepe. We talked about the interlink play with Turney on that, on that left-hand side. Where was Abamian? Where was he running into space? Where was he getting on the end of any crosses? You know, those corners that were superbly taken by Pepe was met with Socrates, David Luiz. As a striker, Abamian, you've got to get your head on that as well. That's your job. And from that perspective, service or not, he just had a bad game yesterday. And uh, I, 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 this team is punching well below their weight, as I've been saying for quite a few weeks now. And in terms of the games against Wolves and away to Leicester City, I think they're going to get spanked. They might get a result against Wolves, but it would be a draw at best. But there's no way I, this team can go into Leicester City and win. Not a chance. And if they do, I'll hold my hand up and say I was wrong. But right now, this team has got some serious problems. And all what we were saying last month about wait till Turney comes back, wait till Lacazette gets fit again, all that counts for naught. Counts for nothing. Because they have the same problems game in, game out. Game management is poor. Formations, the setup, everything from that perspective was poor. I felt bad for the front line because when Sabalos was waving them onto press yesterday, they just wasn't pressing as a team. They've lost that. And I said this so many times in that unbeaten streak last season, Torreira was a big part of that. So was Rob Holding. And neither are on the pitch right now. And I think Holding is probably fit enough to play. But Torreira definitely is. And there isn't a sign of him on the pitch. You know, at some point you've got to say that Unai Emery is the master of his own demise. With the Torreira and the Ozil situation and the captaincy of Zaka, you have caused that. Nobody else. That's down to the manager and his decisions. These decisions are going to cost him his job. So that's it from me, guys. In my opinion, he shouldn't play for the club anymore. All right, guys, right back at you. Thanks for supporting the channel, and I appreciate the love. Peace out.